We've now been joined by Kevin Harvick, driver for Stuart Haas Racing. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. I know Indy is a place that you hold three wins um, in the Brickyard 400 coming into this weekend, which is most likely scheduled to be your last visit to Indy. Um, tell us a little bit about what this place has meant to you over the years. Yeah, there's no most likely. It is. <laughs> and maybe not my last visit, but last time uh, on the surface as far as that goes. But... Um, yeah, you know, I think for, for me, Indianapolis Motor Speedway has been a, just a, a great place in, in um, my racing career. Um, grew up a kid in Bakersfield, California, wanting to, wanting to race in the Indy 500 like Rick Mears and, and to be able to come close to, to living out that, that childhood dream of winning races at the Brickyard and, and you know, having some success here has been, um, you know, pretty special to, to me, so... You know, it's 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 fun to um, you know to to have celebrated that and and to come back and and be able to uh, to be here one last time is um, is is something that I'll enjoy. All right. Well, now we'll go to media to questions, and we will start with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, the Athletic. Um, these last three years, NASCAR and IndyCar have shared this race weekend here. Um, from your perspective, how do you think it's gone? Uh, well, you know, I think for for me, I I would prefer to be on the oval um, but there are just so many things that probably are are ingrained in the in the background of why we did it and, and why we race together and, and for as a competitor it's it's neat because you get to see people that you typically don't see on a, on a race weekend with the IndyCar guys here and so I'm not going to get into the you know the the reasons of what I think is, is good or bad. Um, you know, I, I personally would prefer, but the oval, but I think for, for me and, and everything that, that, um, I've learned about this is it, there's way more, there's way more to it than my, than my opinion. And so it's, it's been a, you know, a unique experience, um, you know, to have the two groups together and, and be able to function because racers are racers. They just, we just race something different. You look at the schedules for next year. You guys are likely going to be on the, or NASCAR is going to likely be on the oval. IndyCar is likely going elsewhere. So this having this weekend isn't going to happen. Um, is, is this something that an idea that should be pursued though elsewhere and continue on, or is it you know like like you said before, sometimes you do it for a few years, let it go away, and then revisit it down the road? Well, you know, you know, I've been here. You know, you know my opinion on this. It's I, I'm always of the opinion that you you should do something and move on to to something else. So. Um, I think it's it's a it's a unique experience and and it's much like the the clash or street courses or something. I think there's always something that's that's newer and fresher to to go out and and try. Now, if there was three hundred thousand people, it'd be you know that'd be a different different conversation. All right, Bob. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. You potentially could clinch a playoff spot uh, tomorrow. Is Clint, is getting in the playoffs even part of a checklist of things to do during a season? And is there any sense of hey, all, all I need to do is make the playoffs and we have a chance to win it? Well, it's definitely part of the checklist because you can't you have to be in it to win it. And you know, I think that that is is definitely on everybody's checklist and is to is to try to try to make the playoffs. So it's been you know it's been an it's been an interesting year. As far as how things have, have worked out, we've I feel like performed okay with with what we have, and and uh, you know the guys have done a good job in, in making something out of it and put ourselves in position to have a chance to to win a couple races and and had some bad ones and some good ones and kind of fought and scrimped and scraped and worked through an injury to you know after the break to over the over the next six weeks and and just you know we just have fought one battle after another so it's been it's been typical typical four car stuff that, that that we've worked through and we'll just keep grinding away for 13 more. All right, we'll go to Bruce. A lot of conversations I've had with Rick Mears, he talks with a lot of pride about following your career and how proud he is of your accomplishments. And when you hear that coming from one of your heroes growing up, what does that mean to you? Yeah, well, when I, when I, when I was growing up, Rick was around, uh, I raced with, with Clint and Casey. Uh, but Clint mostly in, on the go kart side. So any time that that he would show up at the at the racetrack, it was it was pretty neat to just see him somewhere besides on TV. 
and you know the Mears family in general around the town of Bakersfield was kind of the pinnacle of, of racing, whether it was off-road or Indy cars or when they would come race stock cars at, at Mesa Marin and, and for special events. So, um, yeah, I mean, to, to, to have the guy that, that idolized you or that you idolized and, and be able to, to have him be around and, and watch you race and, and have some sort of connection always, those are always pretty special things to, to deal with. So um, it's been it's been pretty neat. I've been able to interview him a couple times uh, with the radio shows and, and things of that nature. So it's always fun. He always has a you know a great story or and, and been around this long enough to uh, been there, done that, and, and that's fun to, to listen to that wisdom. And the Oval may come back next year, but for the last three years, you've you were the last man to win a Brickyard 400. And how much pride do you have in that? That's good because uh, you know for for me, my last race on the Oval, I'll have won, so I, I feel huh? I feel pretty good about that. You know, it just kind of ended up that way. Did, did you say you were injured? And if so, oh yeah, I fell and I fell down a flight of steps in in uh, in Italy and had a stack of busted ribs for for um, several weeks. All right, Nate. Um, Kevin, after SVG won Chicago, there was a lot of focus on his heel toe technique, and I think that that was a thing for Cup drivers until like late '90s when the transmissions changed. Do you know how to heel toe, or was that a thing when you first came into NASCAR? Did they taught me how to heel toe, and I never used it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I think that the interesting thing that those guys can do is is modulate the the, the braking with the clutch and, and be able to um, to just do so much more in the braking zone. So that's you know, Marcus Ambrose was the last one that that was that good at it, right? And, and um, you know, I think when you like when you look at a Montoya or somebody like that, it's just a it's just a pure bravery. I'll drive it in deeper than you type situation. Those guys are finessing the, the thing deeper into the brake zone and doing just have a better, more efficient technique to to uh, to do that. So, um, but you know, I think when when you look at Shane, I mean, I think when you if Marcus Ambrose would have been in you know the type of car that 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 he's driving, he would have shined. Uh, he shined pretty bright on the road courses, but it would have been a much brighter star if he'd have had the you know the equipment to to do what. Uh, to drive what what Shane has, and and they're both seem very similar in their in their skill levels and their success and, and the things that they've done. So um, it's fun to watch, it, it, you know. Especially, it's just not something that I've ever been a part of, uh, you know. To to have a just a you know really concentrated road race background. Mine's always been on the ovals, but whether it's um, whether they do it in the rain or um, in the dry or whatever that is, it's just a it's an art, and uh, they're good at it. How long would it take you, if you wanted to use that art in a race, how long would it take you to feel comfortable doing That'd it? That'd be like me trying to go race an Indy car. Not going to happen. <laughs> All right, you, Kelly. You know, that's, that's just something you need to do for years to be good at. KellyCrownerRacer.com. Kevin, so just to confirm, as you said, last race on this surface, so even if it goes back to the oval, you are not coming back and jumping in a car. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so with that said, even though you won't be racing here, do you care about what the future of NASCAR is here on this racetrack? Obviously, a lot of talk of going back to the Oval next year, and, and Doug Bowles is even thrown out there. Well, maybe we alternate it between road course and Oval. You know, I think, I think um, you know, for me, I do care. I have a you know, big stake in, in caring about where this all goes and, and um, you know, sitting in the, in the TV booth and, having drivers and sponsors and competitors. My role is not driving anymore, but it's very much a part of, of this sport that, that has, you know, kind of shaped my life and, and given me all the things that, that I have and, and want to be involved and, and understand and, and make it better, um, you know, as, as you go forward and just doing something different. So um, I'm all about mixing things up, you know, so I think it's, it's important to mix it up. And yeah, I think it's it's just a matter of it's just a matter of what brings people to the grandstands and watches on you know who watches on TV and the amount of eyeballs you can you can you can move the needle with and and obviously we did that with the clash we did that with the with the with the uh, street course and and so there's there's ways to do it it's just a matter of uh, what that is and and you know there's just there's so many things that go into the mixture of of what's right and what's wrong for 
the sport, the track, the people, the sponsors. There's just a lot of elements that have to be that have to be talked through in order to, to make a good decision for everybody. All right, I had an additional question in the back. Kevin, in 2004, Rom Fellows was one of the original road course ringers. It was at Watkins Glen. He finished second. And when you look at then compared to now, how, is, how impressive was it for someone back then to go out there and perform well as a road course ringer compared to now where this car is kind of suited for guys, like for the Australian supercar guys, that are, they're, they're more able to kind of hop in and have – a little bit more success. I've obviously Shane set the bar pretty high for those guys this weekend, but how impressive was it to kind of see what Ron did back in those days? Well, Ron was was really everybody's mentor on the on the Chevrolet side, and and you know you had Boris said that and that that took a lot of these guys and myself. Uh, both those guys have have had moments where they've they've helped and coached and and but. I think you're right. You know, the, the car is much more leans much more towards people coming in and, and being able to be successful on the road course just because of what it is. Our cars were much, much different in, in that particular time as far as how you had to drive them and the, and the way that you had to control the, the wheel hop and everything that, that went with just the, the way that the car handled and everything, everything that went with it. So it was uh, much more specialized as far as the car. Um, in those days, but um, Ron was always good. He did great on the ovals as well in, in, in the truck series and, and had a short stint of that, but you know, definitely definitely somebody everybody looked up to, to to help kind of change the course of road course racing and, and how you looked at it and, and the things that went with it. Because when I started, the road courses were like, oh, we gotta go to the road courses, so let's just find a car, we'll find a motor, we'll go out there and we'll make some laps and we'll go home. Now it's, you know, it's, it's very, it's very technical, and, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of the, the things that go with it are many of the things that they pushed then, but you just, it wasn't as, it wasn't as competitive in the early 2000s as it got to be in the mid-2000s, and, and now, you know, it's another level with a lot of guys that are just very, very good at, at what they do uh, on, on the road courses and able to come in here and adapt to the car. All right. Apologies to wrap here, but um, we're on a tight schedule today. So, Kevin, thank you for thank your you. time. Yep. We appreciate it. Good luck this weekend.